to this episode of Home Build Workshop today, we're going to build this really cool license plate guitar. I'll start off the project by tracing my pattern onto some quilted maple to make the neck. Then I'll just cut it out on the bandsaw. This guitar is a commission project for a friend of mine. The license plate is actually from his dad's second vehicle. It's actually really cool that I get to use it for a project just like this. Now with the template held down with double sided tape, I'll route out that profile using a template bit. After the initial sanding is complete, now I'm going to flatten the top edge in preparation to glue on the fretboard. You'll notice a little piece of red tape sticking out from the bottom of the neck. This is to shim the center of the neck up. I'm going to intentionally sand just a little bit of relief into the neck. Since this doesn't have a truss rod, there's no neck adjustment. So I'm trying to build in just a little bit of string relief. So now I have the neck mostly sanded. It's very close to its final dimension, close enough to where I can move on to the body. I'm gonna use this piece of quilted maple for the body. I think if I do my math right, I can get the whole body, the sides and the back, out of this one piece. To get the whole body out of this piece of wood, I'm gonna resaw that and then run it through my thickness planer. Then I can cut all my individual pieces out of that stock. Now using a hand plane, I'll joint the edges in preparation for the glue up. Now I'll cut all the pieces to size. And I'll cut some rabbits on the end of the boxes by making multiple passes on my table saw. Now that I have all the pieces cut that will make up the body, it's time to glue these two back panels together. When I glue it together, it's going to be a cool little book match piece that will make up the back. I can tell by the squeeze out being nice and even that I got these two joints pretty straight and an even amount of glue applied all the way across. Before the glue is completely dry, I'll scrape off the excess glue. Then using a card scraper, I'll clean up the joint just a little bit more. This would probably be a good reason to build a bench hook for doing operations like this. I think I'm going to put that on my project list. Now I'm going to glue these side pieces together to make up the box. And while that glue is drying, I'll trim the back piece down to rough size. As I'm getting ready to glue on the back, I'm really noticing how much this wood is already cupped since I glued it up. I think it's going to be okay. It's not rigid enough to where I can't bend it back into shape. But that's, that's crazy because it was clamped flat. Not too worried. I think it's going to be just fine. Plus, I'm going to be gluing in some reinforcements. It'll help hold it together. It's going to be fine. I'm going to resort to my heavy steel plate to use as the base. That way I know everything will be nice and flat when I clamp it all together. With the body out of the clamps, I'll trim off the excess material from the back using the bandsaw. Now I can notch the box to fit the neck. After some careful measurements and careful blade height adjustment, I'll just cut a slot and nibble away the center. Okay. 
Now that I have the neck fitting really nice to the body, I'm going to go ahead and work on the fretboard. I'll start out by marking out the fret locations and cutting the slots with a homemade jig and a fret slotting saw. This is a fretboard blank that I've already prepared. It's a little wider than necessary, but that's fine. I'll trim down the excess later. Now I'm going to thin out the headstock by trimming off some of the excess. Now I'll drill the holes for the tuners. I'm using a drill bit made especially for this purpose. It's a stepped drill bit. It saves a ton of time. Now with the neck clamp securely in my flattening jig, I'm going to use a router to make a notch where the neck will fit the body. Now my jig was not made for this cordless router, but I've really, really been wanting to try this out, so now's my chance. So now that I've got this thing mocked up, it's actually starting to look like a guitar. I'm going to secure the license plate using the original license plate mounting holes. So in order to do that, I need to cut and glue some blocks in place so that I can screw the license plate to those blocks. Now I'm just going to glue in all of that bracing. Spring clamps for the win. You know that saying, you can never have enough clamps? I don't have enough spring clamps. So I'm going to finish this up using a small C-clamp. While that glue is drying, I'm going to drill the side marker dots on the side of the neck. Installing these side marker dots is pretty simple. The hardest part really is just getting your holes drilled in the right spot so that everything looks nice and even. The material that I'm using is just a tiny little piece of a plastic or acrylic or something. I like to just squirt out a little bit of glue onto a piece of tape or cardboard or something and then I can take my material, dip it in the glue, and then tap it into the hole. Then I just use some flush cutting pliers. Snip it off. Now the glue is dry on all the blocks and bracing that I glued inside the body. Now I need to make sure that everything is perfectly level. I can feel just the tiniest bit of difference in height on these. I need to even that out. To do that, I've got this high-tech sanding block right here. It's really just a piece of plywood with some 240 sandpaper spray glued to the top. Next, I'll drill some recesses in the back of the body to accept the ferrules for the neck screws. And while I'm at the drill press, I'll drill the holes for the string ferrules on the neck.
the very last holes that I need to drill will be the fret position markers drilled on top of the fretboard. And these will get glued in exactly the same as the side markers. And then I'll sand them completely flush. This will also serve as the final sanding for the fretboard. Now it's time to take this neck, which is just a glued up block of wood at this point, and get some frets in this thing. For this guitar, I'm using medium frets. The last ones I've done, I've used jumbo frets, which is my preference when playing electric guitar, but I think the medium frets are gonna work better on these cigar box guitars. I'll start the fretting process by working a little bit of glue down into a handful of slots. Then I'll tap the fret in lightly, trim it off, and press it in with my fret press. I like to work on four or five frets at a time. I'll just continue this process and work my way down the entire fretboard. A few passes with my fret end file will clean up the edges. And now we carve. I'm using a combination of a spoke shave and several files and rasps to work the neck down to the size that I need. After the carving, then we sand, and sand, and sand some more. I'm sanding everything by hand up to 220. And just as I was about to start spraying some clear, I realized I forgot to drill the holes for the controls as well as the output jack. It wouldn't have been a big deal if I started spraying the clear before that, but I'd rather do it all now and then spray the clear. Look at that figure. Even in the neck, the flame in the neck really comes out. Oh, it's gonna be cool. Once there's a few coats on the headstock, I gotta stop and apply the water slide decal. Once I work out all the water bubbles and it's had some time to dry, I'll apply several more coats of clear to seal in the decal. Well, it took a little while, but I've got the finish completed a lot of sanding in between coats in order to build up a good finish, but got a nice shine. Everything's sealed up. Let's get this thing together. And I've got the neck clamped back down to a flat work surface, and I'm checking the height of the frets to see whether or not I need to do a complete fret level. As I'm checking the frets, I'm actually pretty impressed that there's only a handful of them that have a little bit of rock using this tool, I think I can get away with not doing a complete fret level and just doing a little bit of spot leveling. So that's awesome. I'm really happy with the way that the frets turned out on this neck. So I'm gonna move on and get these high frets taken care of. And lastly, I'll mask off the entire fretboard, leaving just the frets exposed. And using my homemade buffer, I'll polish them up to a nice shine. If you want to see how I made this buffer, there's a link down below Ooh. in the description. With the fretwork complete, now I can finally start putting this thing together. Using my drill press and a tool designed specifically for this purpose, I'll press in the string ferrules. Then I can install the tuners.
Now I'll do a little soldering on some of the components that it's going to be easier to access before I install them in the body of the guitar. Then I'll install those components in the body and finish wiring it up. So that wraps up most of the wiring. I have one more pickup to install in the neck, but I want to make sure I get that located in the right spot, so I'm going to get that neck installed now. In order to make sure that the screws go in nice and smooth, I'm going to use just a little bit of paste wax, dip the screw in there, and drive it in with a screwdriver. I don't want to use an impact driver or anything. I want to make sure I'm putting these in nice and easy by hand, especially the first time, in order to make sure I don't split any wood. Nick, meet your new friend, Body. This is the first time they've been bolted together. This thing is nearing completion. Now the reason that I wanted to get to this point before I locate and install the last pickup is because I've designed this, hopefully, so that the bridge is gonna land right here on the license plate. I wanted to try to retain the integrity of the entire license plate and not have to drill holes in it. So I wanted to get everything in place, my bridge measurements should fall right about in the middle of those letters, but I wanted to make sure that it's in the exact spot. So now I'm just gonna line it up, and now I can use a square to locate the approximate location of where the pickup needs to go. I want it to be located on the neck just a smidgen ahead of the bridge. I'll just make a little pencil mark, and that'll tell me right where I need to drill the recess to install the pickup. And now I can secure the pickups with some hot glue and complete the wiring. Now I just need to get this top mounted and since it's a license plate, what better fastener to use than license plate bolts. I ran up to the auto parts store and picked up some quarter 20 license plate bolts. I'm just gonna use a number seven drill bit and a quarter 20 tap and tap threads right into the wood. Now all that's left to do is string it up and install a homemade bridge. So I've got the thing all set up, I've got it plugged in, testing everything out. We got some electronics, everything's working good. Volume control. Our pickup selector switch switches from what is similar to a bridge position to the center position and similar to a neck position which is the pickup mounted to the back of the body. It's a lot thinner sound, very similar to a neck pickup on an electric guitar with a neck pickup. With the amp turned off, I'm playing this as basically an acoustic guitar. You can actually tell how well this license plate top resonates. If I strum the strings and then mute the top, I can hear, I don't know how well it comes across on camera, but I can hear really well that when you stop the top from resonating, it actually makes a really big difference. So that's pretty cool. It sounds really good. It's got definitely a different sound, kind of a metallic, similar to maybe a, maybe kind of a resonator mixed with a banjo kind of sound. I don't know, it just sounds, it sounds really cool. And I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I hope you all enjoyed this video. It was definitely a fun project to put together, kind of a different style of guitar. 
and a little bit of a challenge in a few spots along the way for me myself but overall man i am super happy with the way this turned out if you enjoyed the video go ahead and give it a thumbs up also don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss any future episodes you can also follow me on social media all the links are down below in the description and another thing, don't forget that I do have a second YouTube channel called Inside Home Built Workshop where I post some behind the scenes updates as to what's going on in and around the shop. So head on over there, there's a link to that also below in the description if you're interested in some behind the scenes stuff. So thanks a lot for watching everybody. I appreciate the support and we'll see you next time. Sometimes I just end up staring at a piece for a minute or two until I figure out the best method to do what I need to do. Coffee. I'm thinking it's the best way I'm gonna clamp all these pieces up. I just strung this up. Didn't have record on. So watch this, I take it back off, and we do it again. Ow! <laughs> they call it hot glue for a reason. Ooh, that's how it's hot. Somewhere around here, I have a string winder, but I can't find it at the moment. So luckily, there's only three strings to wind by hand. <laughs> These dang bottles, always glued shut. And just glued this up. <laughs> Didn't hit record. Luckily the glue's not dry yet. We're gonna do it again. <laughs>